I wanted to define the archetype uh, Messiah rock star. That's all I wanted to do. And I used the trappings of kabuki theater, mime technique, um, fringe New York music, like uh, my references were Velvet Underground, right. whatever. Suffragette City or... Uh, it had that, that, the that street, energy value. The I wanted street. that energy value, yeah. It was Even a the cover British the view street. of American en street energy. So Ziggy was, for me, a very simplistic thing. It was what it seemed to be, an alien rock star. And uh, for performance value, I dressed him and acted him out. I left it at that. Other people reread him and contributed more information about Ziggy than I had put into him. Right, they could read it, novels about that guy. Right, I think basically because of the uh, that I'd put three viewpoints into the album um, from uh, three different areas. Maybe the the character himself would appear, and then there would be two other statements by two other people, all on one album, which was kind of confusing. Oh, but very it was, I mean, it was, it was uh, the way an author would write a book. Yes. Rather, I mean, it hadn't been utilized that much in, in, in records. And I Forever. had and trouble they, explaining they that they it was just, it was a they. theater piece that the spiders didn't really exist, that they only existed for the length, the duration of that character's life. Right. And I was stuck with him for a long time. It took a long time to shake him off after I'd finished working with him because people relate to him more than David Bowie at the time. Yeah. It was still very hard for anybody to realize that a rock artist can go on stage and be a different People person every time he goes on stage. They do that Nobody was doing that. Day, though. It need not be repetitive, right? Exactly. You don't have to be the same personality every time you go on stage. And uh, mine was more exaggerated. That's there are no that's... characters really involved with the, the last two projects other than David Bowie. I, I with, see. with Low and Heroes. Yes. Yeah. No, of course not. I'm, uh, because when I got back to Europe, before I could start getting involved with characters or narrative again, I had to define a new form of musical language. And, and at this I point, Germany was really a part of you at this time. I mean, you no, that happened when I left America. As I was leaving America, I knew I had to get to an environment that was totally different to Los Angeles. So I thought of the most uh, arduous city that I could think of, and it was West Berlin. <laughs> and so I stuck myself. You picked up place. everything and just sort of took a flat. I left everything. And left and just went there. Yeah, and I left Bel Air and uh -huh. I left all my <laughs> millions of videos. And then moving out of that to an area where I actually had to go down the road and buy food in a shop, actually learn how to buy a plane ticket, which mm. sounds so sort of, you know, naive and trite. It sounds most like people, you, because they can do those things. Sounds like you dumped a lot of people along the way then. That you yes, I did. That for you. I did. I reduced this whole incredible entourage that was sort of starting to develop down to three or four people that I work very well with. Um, is, is that sort of how you live now, with that sort of hub of people? Yeah, well, I've... I've, I've uh, my womb of Berlin, when it was a womb because of the wall, I guess it was all psychological to go there. I mean, I needed some kind Protection of womb. Of that There's fortress. a tension there, too. The tension there is terrific, and it, it, it forced me to reevaluate my position in any given society. <clears throat> that, in between know, Low and Heroes, even, you took Iggy Pop to Berlin mm. to, to make his record. I think, I, and, uh, yes, I, I think it's a very good therapeutic city for an artist to go to. I, I, I want to come ask. back to. Not the uh, punk street level, but a real street level, oh, where yeah. you have to go and do things for yourself, well, where nobody will up. take any notice of you. I was totally anonymous in Berlin. But you they do couldn't that. care less. You well, seem to do that. I mean, after every album, after every tour or project, you take these bizarre trips and you go away. But how, I mean, who wants to come to a city and have people come up to you and say, you know, what's happening on Mars at the moment? Oh, I mean, yeah. you know, it's yeah. you've got to. <laughs> Very unlikely that would happen in Kenya. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tell sure. us about Kenya. Kenya? Yeah. What do you want to know about Kenya? Are you going to record there back? next? Okay, well, um, I don't know. I, 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 I didn't know what to expect from Kenya before I got there. I mean, I went there to show my son how animals really live, um, that they're not always behind bars, because he's seen the Berlin Zoo. And, and things like that, and that's about it. I mean, he's only six, and he hadn't, he's only seen them in, in zoos, and so he got there, and, and 
We started looking at the animals and then I found it was a real country with real people in. It wasn't just one great big safari. And there were kinds of people that I'd never come across before. People called tribes who led existences that they've led for 700, 800 years. Unchanged. Unchanged. Yeah. And also very quite another quite humbling experience. Uh, completely. I mean, it's totally humiliating. I've never met such proud and tall people. 